I'm Dave McCaddy from Middleton Veterinary Services in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia. We're going to be looking in this video today at the Quantitative ELISA Lab, or Q-Lab for short. It's a lab procedure that we've set up between myself and some colleagues in Holland to find Aleutian disease positive mink that are tolerant or resistant to Aleutian disease so they'll essentially live with Aleutian disease. It's an alternative to uh, iodine testing, first developed because we want something more accurate than iodine testing. At the same time, it is only for people that have Aleutian disease. If you don't have Aleutian disease, this test isn't going to help in any way, and the CIEP test is still the test of choice to use to find out if you're still clean and uh, continue on staying clean. Okay, these are the combs that we use. They're referred to as combs because of their natural shape. Each one will handle 12 blood samples. And we started at the very beginning working with the mink ranchers to find a nicer way to do blood sampling than the previous methods. So this is what we came up with. The one on the bottom is a blank comb. A little hard to see possibly, but there's little pieces of blotter paper on it. Special blotter paper that antibodies don't stick to, but the blood clots on. The middle one is a very nice comb. The guidance we have is you clip a toenail on the mink, put the comb up to it, and drip blood onto it. It takes about a third as much blood as the pipetting method. And we try to fill the piece of blotter paper so all four corners are square. They're all full. The one on the top is not a very good comb. And by the way this method works, the one that has very little blood on it will have very little antibodies, so that'll give us inaccurate results. It'll make that mink look really good when maybe she isn't. Next to it, there's one that has far too much blood on it. That one, again, will look really bad compared to what it really should be. So it puts us in a guessing game. If that's a really good mink, but we got twice as much blood as we should, it'll make her look not as good as she should. The one with very little blood may be a, good, a bad mink, but because we got so little blood, it'll make her look good. So we try to aim for samples that look like the one in the middle. These are the blood samples that we've been running. We run 3,000 samples at a time, which is 30 of these plates. And each one of the cards that holds 12 different mink samples are going in in order, numbered by the plate they're in, so we keep track of them all. At the end of it, it's all computerized, so the reports come back showing each one of the combs and each one of the 12 samples. Occasionally we get ones like this that don't have enough blood on them. Those are just the end of the row and they weren't mink there. So we keep on putting these ones in. We keep an eye on them as we go to make sure there's some that don't have enough. We'll keep track of those. And then that is sitting in a phosphate buffered solution for 30 minutes to incubate and draw the blood out. 30 minutes have started. After the 30 minutes, we take the samples out. And at this stage, the antibodies that we don't know how much the mink have have been released into the solution. And we put it in here and wash it all out. The process goes fairly rapidly. So we'll start taking one more out. We usually have this one finished just about the time that that last one is done. So there's a conjugate put in there now, part of the chemical reaction. It's going to go through three chemical reactions before we're finished. Second one goes on. First one goes over here to be incubated for 30 minutes. Okay. When the buzzer goes off, this has been incubating for 30 minutes. It's changed from the clear color we saw before to now blue color. These are our two controls here. There's nothing in between, so it's still clear. At this stage, we can see that these animals are fairly high in antibodies. The darker the blue is, the more antibodies there's been in this reaction. So this is when the substrate has been added. Then we take it after the substrate's been added, it's been incubated. We add some acid to it, which stops the reaction. And then once the reaction has stopped, we will see a change in color, which changes it to a yellow and it's stable. 
And at that stage, we'll be reading how yellow it is, essentially. So that's the finished the finish project now. All different shades of yellow. By the naked eye, those are all just yellow. But the 808 machine will read how yellow that is, and that measures the amount of antibodies that are in that. Okay. Now that we have the plates that have the measured yellow on it, this machine will measure how accurate that yellow is. Put it in there. So that's reading it now. The results will come up in here. They'll be blue coated. The white ones are the very best. Dark blues are the worst. And then from there, they'll be exported to an Excel program to show this. So we have some fairly good readings here. There's a very good one here. All these ones are reasonable. In the dark shade, there's nothing completely dark here. Okay, so the data we just transferred over to the sex health program. We'll then compile all the results. We choose a cutoff. In this case, this rancher likes a cutoff of one. That's a very good level for uh, females. We usually use a 0.5 for males. So we compile the data. So all these animals have their score right here. And that's where we get into a numbers game as to which ones to keep and which ones not to keep. That's all emailed to you or printed. And uh, nice to just put that on your iPhone and you can take it to the barn and look at the results while you're looking at the mink and decide which ones to get rid of and which ones not.